And now let us turn to our next reading of Scripture. From Luke, it's chapter 4, verses 21 through 30. Then he began to say to them, Truly, or today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless, you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did in Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine all over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them, and he went on his way. The grass withers, and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord lives forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So last week, we looked at the passage just before this one in the book of Luke. And as you may have noticed, we actually had one of the same verses in there that we had last week, where Jesus was beginning his ministry. Just come back from the 40 days in the desert, fasting. And here in the scripture just before this, we find Jesus teaching at the synagogues around Galilee. And then he went to his hometown in Nazareth and went to the synagogue there and read from the book of Isaiah. Very powerful passage. And that was pretty much where last week's scripture left us. And that scripture being fulfilled in the people's hearing in that synagogue. Well, in Nazareth, to think about Jesus' hometown, here on the map, you can see Jerusalem down uh, kind of under halfway, just a little bit to the left of center. Nice, we've got an arrow there. I like that. Uh, so there's Jerusalem. Okay, that's where he ends up later on. That's where he's crucified. Now go up from there, all the way up, and then a little towards the center, a um, little more in the center and keep going up some more and you've got the area of Galilee. And up there, that was the place where he was traveling around to the different synagogues and up there um, could be found the town of Nazareth. His hometown, where he was raised, where people knew him, where people could identify him and say, hey, isn't that Joseph's son? We know him. Well, isn't he just all grown up now? He's doing pretty good. Coming back and teaching so well in these synagogues. I'll tell you what. And Jesus was doing really well. He proclaimed the very purpose for his arriving on the scene. A powerful purpose as it was. Bless you. And they praised him. They really praised him, temporarily at least, for his teaching regarding the scriptures. Even at first, um, in reading that Isaiah passage, when he presented himself as the anointed one that's described by Isaiah, sent to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor for the poor and the captives, for the blind and the oppressed, claiming that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him because he'd been anointed for this, and that the scriptures that he was reading by the prophet Isaiah were being fulfilled in their hearing as he stood there and was reading them, starting his ministry. 
Those people saw him as an absolute hero at this point. And not just any hero, but the hometown hero. Now we could think about the hometown hero, we could think about it in terms of, let's say, Larry Bird. Right? Okay, now, uh, I know it's, it's Super Bowl Sunday. I should be talking about football. So I guess in a way we could think about Peyton Manning or Andrew Luck, even though they didn't really come from here. You know, Peyton was here long enough that we've kind of gotten to know him, and he started some organizations, and he comes back from time to time. And now Andrew Luck has had the year here that's gone really well, and he's building up. We have lots of high hopes for him um, as he's kind of becoming this next hometown hero in a way. Uh, but I mentioned Larry Bird because he's actually from in. Indiana. And uh, we uh, really look up to this hero and how he comes back and lifts us up and how we feel about ourselves. You know, that hero, the hometown hero, may talk about how much they just love their home. They may come back to run a local organization, you know, like Peyton Manning with the Children's Hospital. Larry Bird came back to run the Pacers. Something very exciting. It just feels good. You know, but that's not really what was being found in Jesus as he returned to his hometown, as he was standing up becoming this hero in his hometown. That's, I think, what they were picturing happening. I think that had something to do with why he was getting so much praise. But then Jesus kind of turned things around on him with the next words that he said. He goes on describing, uh, you know, a little bit from their history about the prophets Elisha and Elijah. He, Jesus tells of Elijah and Elisha um, and uh, the many peoples where there's a widow who was saved, and the many lepers where there was the one who was saved. Only one widow and one leper from each example were saved out of all those others that did have some need, some serious need. This is a difficult passage to wrestle with. And what is Jesus getting at by telling these people this? He was just getting all this acclamation, all this support, and people are so excited. And then he goes and gives them an example about how very, very few people are reaping the, just the pure benefits of what those prophets came to bring. It's a difficult message and how it related to them. They understood how it related to them. They were saying, oh, you all people think that you're going to get all the benefit that you really want out of this? Well, let me tell you a story. Remember in history where there's all those people that just wanted the benefit for themselves, but very few received? Very few were willing to turn to the Lord in such a humble and respectful way? Well, it's the same here. Very few of you are going to turn to the Lord in that way to just reap the pure benefits of what's going on here. Now, remember the role of the prophet, okay? Um, the prophet isn't just the person who stands up in worship and reads the scriptures. But the prophet has a special mission to straighten people out. To straighten the people out in the name of God. And now, who really wants that? Who really wants to be straightened out in the name of God? We, all, we, we like to think that we do. You know, we get excited about the words from the Scripture and say, oh, there's so much truth in that. Amen. Love to hear it. And then we also like to leave um, the sanctuary and get back to our normal lives. Keep thinking about how great a message that was, but just kind of want to slip out of the door without applying it to our real lives and being changed by it. So who wants that? Who wants to be changed like that? And in the same uh, way, who wants to be the one bearing that message? Now remember Jeremiah, another prophet, as he understood the important yet uneasy role of a prophet very difficult role of a prophet. He didn't want it. As was mentioned in the children's moment, as um, also was mentioned about Moses, he said, oh, you know, I'm too young for this. Oh, oh I can't speak. You know, don't, I'm, I'm not the right one for the job. Pick somebody else. You know, they understood how important this role was. 
And that's why they tried to back out of it. They didn't want to be the ones calling the people to change, just like the people themselves didn't want to be the ones to actually change, as God was calling for. Now, Jeremiah, much like Moses, much like any others who tried to back out of their calling from God, had full support from God to bear them up where the people would not. To somehow give them strength and keep them going, even where the people would try to tear them down. Jesus' message to his hometown crowd was a very easy one. Uh, I'm not easy, excuse me, very uneasy one. Reality was coming into play. So the people were praising him as he taught. They were okay with him teaching the words of Scripture, kind of standing up there, uh, kind of in the role of teacher, scribe, uh, priest, maybe a little bit of prophet, maybe a little bit of Messiah, even as he was claiming himself as the Messiah. And they were still, you know, not too bothered by that, still praising him as long as it benefited them as they wanted it to. But Jesus was not just speaking the words. He was actually bringing salvation. That was just an early point in his ministry when he's starting to actually bring salvation to the people. Sacrifice. And benefit not as wanted, but benefit as was needed. This is when uh, the fun stopped in his hometown and the crowd went to throw him off the cliff. They didn't want sacrifice. They didn't want benefit as they needed. They wanted simply what they wanted. And this was simply the beginning of the full rejection to come. Here, Jesus being rejected as his hometown, as he mentions that no prophet is accepted in their hometown, well, that's exactly what was happening here. And they tried to throw him off the cliff. And this was just the beginning of that full rejection to come. Speaking these prophetic words, he was rejected. And they came after him. He went forward in his ministry, continued living as the Messiah as the anointed one, as the one to bring needed things to the poor, to the captives, to the blind, to the oppressed. And he was led to the cross and left to die. It's an uneasy thing. It's difficult to think about. So here, at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, as he's about to move forward down this long path to the cross, who are we? Are we that typical hometown crowd, excited about this hometown hero that's going to give us what we want, that's going to benefit us as we want? Or are we true followers who really want what's needed, who really want what's right? for the world, as God wants for the world? Are we willing to humble ourselves and submit ourselves to God's will as those very, very few people mentioned by Jesus, as the widow in Elijah's time, as Naaman the leper in Elisha's time? Are we willing to humble ourselves and submit to God's will? Even if we have to come down off of our pedestals, we like our pedestals. We like feeling all high and mighty. We like being lifted up by our hometown heroes and feeling good about where we come from. Are we willing to humble ourselves even if we have to come down off those pedestals and think about, okay, there are things that I'm guilty of in my life, things that need to change in my life ways that I need to be straightened out in order for those people who are in the greatest of need to be lifted up? Are we willing to sacrifice? Are we willing to give, truly give, freely as God gives? Are we willing to love for the benefit of those who lack? My prayer is, may we be the true followers that God calls us to be. Amen.